Hello, my name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software. Today I want to talk about extended events. More specifically, I want to talk about the extended events graphical user interface, the live data interface. Um, it's not really well known how to use it properly. A lot of people are doing stuff with it that um, makes it hard, makes it ugly, makes it not really useful. And I want to expose as much of the information within it as I can here in this little video uh, to give you an idea of, of the kind of capabilities that it actually has um, and will get you more excited about wanting to use it uh, because it's a useful tool and it does a lot for you uh, very quick very easy and you know man I'm all about easy so let's take a look this is management studio what I'm going to do is I just want to create a brand new session for you guys um, we're going to use the GUI, um, if you're really doing a lot of work within um, extended events, you're definitely going to want to use T-SQL, not the GUI. But for purposes here, we're just going to do a uh, demo video for you. And we're going to watch session immediately after session creation and watch live data to see as it's captured. So we can see all this information is all set up. Now the events we want to capture, we're just going to capture a couple of standard query tuning events. Um, there's all kinds of stuff we could do, but um, we're just going to keep things nice and simple for this uh, for this demo here. And we will look for SQL batch complete. There we go. And just as part of the configuration, I'm going to ensure that I've got them both selected, put a filter in place, and filter on the database name. So I only capture the events for one database. There we go all set. Now in terms of data storage, we will output to a file. It's generally what I like to use. It's a safer approach. We'll just use all the dem all the uh, defaults and let that go. So that's going to create the extended event session. It's going to fire it up. It's going to start the live data window for us and we could turn this on. Um, turning it on is this very simple thing. You over right click, watch live data. That would open up the same window here but we're where we need to be. And as you can see, if you look at it, there are events going by. I've got a process, I've got a couple of processes, in fact, running in the background, making a series of calls, both with RPC completed events and SQL batch completed events. And so there's just a whole bunch of queries being run against the server over time. Now, if we wanna look at them, you'll notice all we have to do is click on one and down in the detail below, we will see the session information. So if we wanted to see, oh, I don't know, CPU time, there it is. Now these things are running past and, and this is all going on live. Let's stop the live collection of data just for the moment because it'll just make things a little easier to explore what's going on. Now, clicking on any one of these, you can see that down below, I can see duration, I can see logical reads, I can see the object name, and if we find, I want to find the store procedure that I'm calling. There we go. So the object name in this case is product transaction history by reference, and you can see the duration, the reads, as I said, all that fun stuff. And if we take a look here, we can see that, in fact, not only do we see the object name just by object name, you know, this is the product transaction history by reference table, or ex I'm sorry, um, store procedure, but we can also see the call exec dbo dot product transaction history by reference at reference order ID is equal to 47708. So one misnomer that we hear all the time for some reason about the extended events is, is that, well, if you run the extended events, you cannot see the parameters values passed during execution. And well, that's not true. Let's find another example. Ah, there we go, 47709. Let's find another example, um, 47710. Clearly, I am in fact capturing those events. I am seeing the events come by. So I'm not simply lost out here, not knowing what's going on. In fact, what I have is I have added information because I've got the object name as well as the call to the statement with the parameter value. So I've got both. Now, the thing is, is that if you're looking at this, you're going, well, hang on, I wanna, I wanna compare this call, 
47701, uh, CPU time 15 milliseconds. Um, I'm sorry, duration is, uh, um, that's microseconds, by the way. Um, duration is um, five milliseconds. And so I wanna compare that to the other call that we saw up here. Oh, there it was. It's actually hard. If you look at the top of the screen, you have to click up here and then you look down here, you click up here, you look down here. That actually makes this very not useful. And so it's why a lot of people will not use live data. But let's do this. Let's right click on the object name and say show column in table. And you'll notice that now that column has been moved up to the top. So if I'm interested in comparing, say, duration, show column in table, and logical reads, show column in table. Now suddenly, we can expand this out just a little bit. Now suddenly we see that, oh, there's the store procedure call. The duration was 2.9 mil, um, milliseconds, 2,000 microseconds. Uh, we can see that this one was 6.5 milliseconds with 35 reads. And this one also had 35 reads, interestingly enough, but it ran faster. Um, whereas this one, you know, ran a little slower with uh, a slightly higher number of reads. But we can now compare them directly up on the grid, directly up on the table, and control them over time. This suddenly makes things much more interesting, right? We can see what's going on. Further, we can, you know, like, let's say, oh, you know, I kind of don't care about the name, RPC completed or whatever. All I'm really caring about right now is the um, object name. Well, let's just remove this column. We can do that as well. We can remove columns. Or we can go into the column picker and start adding or removing columns. Let's say we also wanted to see if there were any writes. Let's make sure we see those. And so we've got logical reads, writes, and you know duration. And from a query tuning standpoint, that's enough for the moment to give us what's going on. And so we can see what's there. We can even add merged columns. So if we want to combine a couple of columns together, say you wanted to take the statement and the batch text from the batch completion things and make them a single column, you could combine the two and put them out to one column and then group on that if you wanted to. Click on OK, and you see, of course, that it updates the grid. All cool stuff. Very much more useful than just looking at what we were given by default. It gives us a very high degree of control to show exactly what we want to see um, in any way that we want to see it. Further, let's close this. Let's reopen Demo Video Live. You'll see that it now has retained the exact layout that I gave it. It will remember that layout for each individual session on this machine. Now, what if you want to put it on another machine? No problem. Hit Save As. And now we can output this to another file and share it with others, put it onto another machine, do whatever we need to do with it to ensure that anytime we open up this session, it looks exactly the same way so we can control it. And so now you see it's going by and there's live data occurring. Let's pause the live data again. We can pause it and we can start manipulating it now with filtering. We can add a filter and say, well, only show me between certain time values, for example, or only show me for uh, durations greater than you know some value or less than some value or whatever it is that we want to look for. And then it will filter down the data so we're only looking at that information. And that's all very useful. But where I get excited is in this. Now we've, we're looking at this very specific store procedure and then we're also looking at these SP reset connections, a bunch of batch ones, SP underscore execute SQL. Look, I want to focus down on um, just a set of store procedures. I just want to see the store procedures. Okay, cool. Let's group by object name. Very simply done. And now it lays out the grouping. And we can see now that the store procedure that we're interested in, there were 3,198 instances of the call to that. We can look at those individual calls. We can still see the individual statement. So we can see the individual, let's zoom this out just a little bit. We can see the individual 
um, parameter values that were passed, and, and yes, each one has its own distinct parameter value, but then we can see the logical reads and the durations. This is extremely useful. Now, what if we're doing query tuning? Well, we're gonna wanna compare a certain number of calls from this procedure to another certain number of calls from another procedure. Okay, great, how could we do that? Well, let's look at aggregation. Let's put in a duration and let's say, give me the average duration. Let's give me the um, max reads and you know uh, the min writes. It's gonna be zero because there aren't any writes in these queries, but that's okay. So now, even though we've got that expanded out, let's contract it down for a second. Now we can see the average duration for that procedure. We can see the max number of reads for that procedure. For the information I've collected, I've now got aggregations available so I can see what's going on. I can start, you know, if I've got like all these different calls, 3,000 different calls, if there's one particular call I care about, I can toggle a bookmark and I can have another one. I can have more than one bookmark. I can have multiple bookmarks and then I can go through the previous bookmark, next bookmark, whatever. I've got a much easier way to scroll through this information. I can search for values in here. So if I only wanted to see um, procedure calls against 75025, um, let's find that. And, we're, and it's gonna look in either table columns or a particular thing. We can, you know, whatever, however we wanna do it, we can sit there and find that. And so let's find next. Now it's only gonna look in table columns so it didn't see it. So let's do this. Show column in table. And now, Let's see if we can find it. Oh, look at that. It tracked it right down. Found the specific call based on the value that I was looking for. So, here's the deal. The concept that extended events is not as functional as Profiler is crazy. Because in fact, not only does are there more extended events than Profiler, not only is there more functionality in extended events with all kinds of additional things you can do with filtering, um, with causality tracking, all these other things that you can do, but we are also given a more advanced GUI that allows us to do a whole lot more with the data that we've collected. Now, by the way, I've been doing all this against live data. What if we wanted to look at something you know, that I collected a couple of months ago? Well, let's go in, open, go to File, Browse, find, you know, something here, something from June. Awesome. We'll open that up and take a look. And sure enough, it's got all the stuff laid out and we can dun, 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 do the same kind of thing. Show me the duration and see these things. And it's going to lay it out exactly the same way. And it will remember the way I've set these things up. And all of this stuff is going to function as you've seen in this demo. Suddenly, live data and extended events are much more useful than they had been before. All right, thanks for watching. Hopefully you got a lot more out of that and um, you've got a better idea of what you can do with this tool, the way it can help out and the stuff it can do, you know, to, to make, you know, say query tuning easier. Um, please subscribe to this channel. I have lots more tips coming on all kinds of topics from query tuning, execution plans, DevOps, you name it, and don't forget about my database uh, introduction, SQL Server introductory series um, on, on the website as well. So that's it. My name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software.